Well, well, well. Welcome to Scotch for Dummies. <laughs> <laughs> this Thursday, we will be discussing Bladnock 15 Year Adela. We are discussing our second part of our barrel aging discussion, which is going to cover toasting, charring, and whatever was in the barrel prior to being a mm -hmm. scotch, uh, Phil. And then we're also going to be having some scotch in the news. Dr. Scotch is going to be stopping by. It's going to be a great show. Stick around. Four dummies here. It's Thursday. There we go. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday. Cheers, guys. I'm the, well, I'm the only one wearing a white t-shirt. No, because you're Dr. Scotch. Yeah, you, this, this is a t-shirt. This is a t-shirt my favorite Scotch for Dummy guy. Oh, man. Who's that Dr. guy? Dr. Scotch coming. Mm-hmm. I got to show you guys. Pan on it. I can tell you, I did listen to the podcast last week. It was interesting. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this week's yeah. topic. Heck and yeah. And this actually, guys, has... Got a lot of comments. Of I'm, I'm anxious to talk about all good, bad, and indifferent. All That's right. Let me, let me get the other screen up so you guys can see who's yeah, actually so on. So who all's on? I'm guessing we got a crowd tonight. Wow. Yeah, let me we pop do. this out so you can see even more. The first name I saw was Bree Ampler. Yep. Hi, yep. Graham. Trooper. <laughs> Justin. Oh, oh, missed the pre-show. Gil. Gil. Dizen. I, who's that? Dizen. I, Dizen? I think that's new. Bottoms Cheers, up, man. Bottoms up. Cheers. Nice to Welcome see to you. the show, Stephen Rogers. Saw him earlier. There's Mark. Bobby, Bobby J. J. Yeah. I need to pour something. Greg Good Lewis day. is Josh. on tonight, too. Thanks, buddy. What's up, Greg? Right. Good to see you. One Lost Cause. Oh, I got uh, Cohen. That's a new one, right? Uh, just came from Rock Gut Review Live, and their stream crashed or something. Well, welcome well, to ours. Welcome to ours. Right. Glad you can make <laughs> yourself <laughs> something. Pull up a we, chair. We, we won't guarantee that nothing bad will happen to ours either, because that'll jinx us <laughs> for sure. That's technology for you, man. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, it's looks all like good. we looks like we got a good start going on. So, so how you guys doing? Everybody good? <laughs> Man, it's been a long it, week. It's uh, it sounds like a, a record every th Thursday we say that, but it's true. It is. I mean, I, we look forward to this every week because it's like, oh my gosh, just need to we finally get to get together gotta, and relax. And just got to drag scotch. yourself over the finish line. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I barely made it. Honestly, I told Drew before I laid my head down. About seven o'clock, just to just to rest my back for a second. I, I opened them back up. It was eight fifty. I was like, uh "Oh, this is gonna be a quick Neck shower." Back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, dang, it's just that's the way it is. But I see the brand's other half Sunday evenings on. I like that we're representing uh, older sh uh, shirts too. You've got the the test dummies yeah. when we were in uh, yep. Wichita, and then I, I got the old throw them some love. Burnt Burnt toast. toast, and you've got the newer one. That, that, yep. Well, you got the classic. I got, I got this the classic. Is, this is a prototype shirt. We're doing some yeah, we're gonna to it to make it, make it even better, but it's still pretty great. <laughs> I wore I wore the Molly shirt last week, so yep. Well, and and this one bit. pretty closely matches the the. the hey, her. Good to see you. Dr. So happy Thursday, everybody! I hope you guys got a good dram poured and, and a comfortable seat because we've got some good stuff to talk about. Yeah, we got we got a busy show tonight, man. Um, we're gonna start off. We're gonna get into this bottle here, but what else are we talking about? Let's give a, a quick highlight, a quick preview. So we've got uh, we're gonna talk about this bottle and our review. We poured some out. There was a few comments about we needed to let it kind of open up, and I'm not gonna argue with that. We even talked about it on the review. We did that it needed more time that we just didn't have that time to give it but you know that's that's one of the things that we've decided to do over the years was to yep. to do it the same way to be fair to all the whiskeys and and to review them um in a similar fashion just so you guys understand where we're coming from uh, so we're going to talk through this a little bit and then we've got the second part of our discussion on the barrel aging process um, i believe dr scotch has some in-depth information to provide with us but we're going to talk about you know toasting and charring and what that means and how it affects the whiskey, uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, stuff that was in the barrels prior to there being scotch in there, yep, right. and how that's going to affect the whiskey, what it's going to do over time. So it, I think it'll be an interesting discussion to have. Um, 
I mean, there's a lot of information to go well, over. We, a lot. And some should, things have changed over the years. Yeah. We should probably get going, too, because last week we ran over it, and it was so much time, to, so right. much discussion to have. All right. So well, you want to get the podcast Let's get the podcast, podcast going. All right. We'll let's get the podcast started. All right. In three, two, what's up, guys? Hey, guys. Yeah. It is Scotch for Dummies. Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. I'm Drew. I'm Sean. I'm Mark. And I am Andrew. Man. Fun and, show tonight. Part and, two. Part <laughs> two. Part two. Yes. Part two. Part two. <laughs> We are Such going to be talking movie. about our review this week of Bladnock 15, uh, the Adela. Adela? A Lowland for us. A Lowland, which is rare. It's, it's hard to find, and it's rare, definitely rare for us. Right. Had, and it brought some decent, it brought a decent score. It actually. did. I, I know for a fact that we definitely moved the market a little bit, because I know a bunch of people that bought it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally texted them and said, do, do, we, do we really make a difference? <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a decent bottle, actually. The, I actually, for one, am really in love with the bottle itself. That's a beautiful bottle. It is a cool it's, it's bottle. It's, it's one of those bottles that you pick up that's that's designed to be kind of a showpiece. and a uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's like its own decanter. I yeah, mean, really. it really is. Um, it's thick glass. In fact, if you don't want that bottle when we're done, I'll take it. The topper is super heavy. Like, it's a nice bottle. Um, but that's all marketing, and that's right. not what we talk about. Nope. Right? nope. We try to talk about what's in the bottle. Well, let's talk about what we experienced well, in the glass, what we've got going on here this well, evening. Do we want to? Not yet. For oh, those of you that are listening at home, we have pre poured this about 15 minutes ago, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe 15, 20, 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. Um, because on our review this week, uh, during our review, we even talked about it. We all four mentioned we, this thing needed more time. It needed more time. It gets better with time. Uh, so, uh, and we got a couple comments about it. Yep. So, well, we but to be it. fair, we always do because it, we and, and that's the baseline. And to make a statement, we always treat every review, guys. We do reviews pretty much just like we're doing right now. They're live. We talk about it for maybe five minutes before we shoot and record, and then we go. And then we treat everyone the same way. Should we do this? Sure. Should we do that? Sure. But we don't. We try to keep everything the same way. Yep. That's it. There has to be a baseline. And, and you can all, everybody does it, and we could have changed it, we could do it better, but at this point in time, we're five years down the road, and it's not yep. fair to those ones we did the first That's year right. to change now. And so at the end of the day, all of this is just opinion. It's true. It's my opinion. It's your opinion. And everybody else on YouTube, that's their opinion as well. So the best thing I can tell you guys who are listening and watching is find somebody that has a similar palette to yours and follow that person. Yep. Um, or two or three people that you trust that seem to have kind of the same answers every time they taste a whiskey that you do. Because their palates and their tastes are probably similar to yours and you're going to like kind of the same stuff, yep. and that'll lead you in the right direction. You know, if you're not a peat head, I wouldn't follow Andrew. Right, you know, right. he likes peaty stuff, and so you're not going to enjoy what he has to offer. So that that's my two cents on that's a good point. all but of that. Y- if you want to explore that, you you know to you know what I'm gonna listen to him a little bit more. I've never got into Pete, so I'm, you know what I'm he and that's his thing, man. He's probably gonna have a little more experience with. It. And it's maybe they don't have the exact same palate as you. That's not a bad thing, no. because honestly, we're all sensitive to our own tastes yeah. and smells. So that's but finding we, somebody else is the key. And we have off nights. We have different things. I mean, we talk about it. That could be a show itself. This. You could have. You could have different things when you've ate something before prior and it threw you off. So, I mean, it happens. But at the end right. of the day, we got four of us, so hopefully three of us will make a good decision. <laughs> okay, so, again, this is Bladnock 15 Adela. It's 46.7% ABV. Uh, it is a Lowland. Um, interesting 20? story. Yeah, about 20 is probably pretty fair to say. Um, I know you can get it in some stores here in the U.S. I know that Tom R. is getting it up at uh, Benny's in Chicago. I ordered this one online. I don't remember where I ordered it from now. Um, but I think I paid, it was either 109 or 119 in shipping. So, But <coughs> I got it. And here's the backstory that you don't know. I got it because I was ordering another bottle for someone's birthday. And I'm one of those guys that never buys one bottle when you're paying for shipping. So I said, this is the bottle that's coming home for me. And this other one's going to this other guy I know for his birthday. I, it was a green bottle. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking wait. about. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's how this uh, ended up at my I, house. I opened it earlier, but that's okay. Right. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, the backstory. So, oh. nose. This is the first time we've actually nosed it, sitting, you know, pre-poured. Yeah, right. And, um, I actually, I really do. I enjoy this whiskey. I've been drinking on it for a couple of weeks since I've had it. And I, but I'll be fair, and, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. And I, somebody will. Honestly, the the first nose, I get a vomit. I don't. I, I get like I get a leather. baby vomit smell. I get leather and cedar and a little bit of cinnamon. Yep, I can see cinnamon on that. Yeah. 
but it's a very refined, like light nose. Yeah. It doesn't well, come up and hit you. It's kind of just hanging out in the background. It's it's very cherry um, cough drop. There's a little see, bit of now that, that yeah, yeah, now I get when I get deep down in it, I get that cherry cough cough drop again. And yeah. Tom, I thank you for correcting it. I couldn't find what what uh, cough drop it was. The, the Ludens. Ludens, Ludens, baby. Yeah, I got uh, Cherry's Ludens. Jubilee ice cream. Yes. What? Yeah. Cherry's Jubilee ice cream. Ice cream. So a little bit of that sweet vanilla with that cherry. You got it, exactly. And, and, and a hint of chocolate, like dark chocolate. That's so... It coats That's the meaty. mouth. But it's not super cherry. Like, I don't know. It's no. more, more sherry than anything. So what was our scores all the way around? Mm, Do we remember? Mine was a three or... Three five, maybe? Three five, three five. I think you guys did three fives. I did a three, three five, I think. Two five, three... I, Somebody, does anybody know our scores out there? <laughs> How do we not know our scores? We just published. I think I gave it a three. I think I did. I think we were all above three. I think. Yeah. Um, I think. I think all the. I think I gave it a three five because it's uh, the dark chocolate cherries really is like one that. of my favorite flavors. It, if, if I'm gonna have like candy or chocolate, that is perfect for me. It's got that the bitterness of the dark chocolate. It's got the sweetness of the cherry. It's, uh, that flavor together is really good for me. And uh, this, uh, it's really good. And I gave wow. to give it a three five. <laughs> three point okay, sorry, three point seven two five. All right, I agree. I That's agree, not Zach. Possible. I agree, Zach. Two seven five. Uh, Josh Stillworth, man. No, we, nobody gave it a four. Uh, yeah, how, I think it was three two five. Yeah. I yeah. Three, three point two five. Anyway, it's fine. Anyway, it's yeah. fine. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do sure. that. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm, I've already we've pre-poured it. I'm going to put that drop in and open it up. It's 46.7, so I don't want to load too much water. But um, to my point, I think, if I for, remember right, this was the one that took the water well. Yeah. yeah. Did. So, and, and for those <clears> listening <throat> on the podcast, I remember right, this is a combination of American and Spanish Oloroso casks. So it's 15 years all Oloroso, but a ratio of American and Spanish. There's some variation between. Of the oaks, right. So you're going to get a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of spice. Yes, 3.37. I, yep. I really, it's just a nice dram. Like, I don't think I would change my score at all. It's, it's hey, mouth cheers. coating. The it's whole Zach body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get Zach, thank you. Thank you, Zach, for the super okay, chat. Cheers. He says, great review of the whiskey. The 15 needs a touch of water, which is what we just talked about, yep. in about 20 minutes. Yep. So I was thinking about the the price and the difficulty and, and probably the variations in our reviews and price. Mm -hmm. You know, when do we consider price and when do we don't, right? Maybe we're not as, as consistent. And my, my take personally is if it's expensive, I'm going to mention price. Yeah. And I ding it when I don't think it's worth that price. Yes. If it's expensive, but I still would buy it at that price, I don't ding it. It's kind of the way I, I, I look at it. I, I look at it similar to that, and I also look at it as there are some bottles that are expensive because they're rare, or they're hard to find. That's true, too. Or the, you know, the liquid in it. You know, If you're going out to buy a bottle of Port Ellen, there's not a whole lot of bottles of Port Ellen. So, so you're going to pay. It's <laughs> going to be expensive because it's a silent distiller, and it is what it is. So, you know, I try and take that into account, but there are times where it's supply and demand and there's only so much of it, and if you want to try it, that's the price of entry. Yes. So, <coughs> and let's um, be honest, there are some bland, uh, brands that uh, they like their, their product a little more than, than others, right? Well, I mean, there's a couple out there that are just a little salty on the price just right. because they right. they look in the mirror and they like you, what they see. I don't see. know what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and, and quite honestly, the, the marketers and the master blenders, they know what they're producing. And they price appropriately based on their range. So their more expensive bottle is typically better if you like their style. So that's where a $125 bottle on Macallan may not be your your choice, but $125 Lafroy may be fantastic and worth it worth it every t every day based on what your favorite profile is. And that's why when we, we get these bottles that are kind of in the pricey range, and we get sometimes get some very disparate scores, it's based on our palates, that it's not worth that to me, but it is worth it to you. And well, that's where, yeah. but it boils down to, and to the, the point at the very beginning of the show, it's if you are already a whiskey connoisseur or a scotch connoisseur, you don't need us that much. You may you may want some of our advice here and there, whatever, but this is, we, we aim, most of our majority audience are 
the same journey we're on. Right. Because, I, mean, I mean, we've barely scratched the surface of scotch. It's crazy. It's, it's massive. What, what review number is this? I, I don't even know. It's like 300 or something, close to 300. But anyway. <laughs> is it really? I don't even know. I, haven't, I stopped counting a long time. My ago. liver hurts. <laughs> but my point is, you is that. You put numbers on it anymore. I don't. Um, <laughs> I gave up. Um, oh, the cow. <laughs> we've got a lot. I, you can anyway. The point Holy is, cow. is we're on a journey. That's the whole point of this. And our journey is to experiment and explore and share with you what we got of it. That's the, the the gist of what we do. Right. And four opinions come with it. And so, if you're on the journey, which I think a lot of you guys are, either podcasting, watching right now, a lot of you have probably had a certain level of certain scotches or whatever and you haven't ex experienced or, or, or experimented at all you maybe you're just wondering so this is what we're trying to do right? so tom is trying to to foreshadow here a little yeah bit. i saw that did you see this uh mm -hmm. i see your comment tom mark what does the different wood contribute to the flavors where can i learn about cask influence <laughs> stand by in about 15 minutes and we'll clue you in appreciate but that thanks for the segue it's yeah I, the segue is about 10 minutes early but repeat so i i think uh End of the day, Bladnock 15, Adela, pretty good bottle. Not the easiest to find, it's but a, good a pretty good bottle. It is a good bottle. For the money, and if you can afford it and you're looking for something a little different, I think this qualifies. Yes. I agree. As far I, as lowlands are, go, I, I think this is... It's a nice welcoming to this the lowland. Is, right. You know, tasting it tonight, this is probably one of my favorite non-peated whiskeys. It just has that... That richness and the character and the leather and it's the cherries. a pretty cherries. big statement. It is. It is. I mean, yeah. it's, it's for, you know, Grand King Alexander has so many more layers to it because it comes from so many more casks. That's true. That's a good point. But this is really good. Well, and I can see your point with, with the water, I think is definitely the way to go. Not too much, but the cherry influence is definitely there. Like it's, and that's, well, that's I get part the dark, of the yeah. dark, yeah, the, the dark covered chocolate cherries. I mean, they're, they're definitely there in the palate. Mm -hmm. So I know that Zach Andrews, uh, uh, that who's watching right now, is pouring. He's got a bottle of the ten. I'm interested to to explore a little bit more of the Bladnock range now that we've kind of cracked the surface on it. So maybe we find our way into something like that in the future. But all in all, I, I thought it was a good review, and, and I'm glad we had a chance to review it. And I, thank you, Tom R, for kind of pointing my nose in that direction, and uh, and and I'm glad we got it. But what was it three? Seven three five, point three two three seven five. Three seven five. Okay, so three so three fives and a three. Okay, yeah. not bad. I, I, I think good. that's a good wrap that's up. A good now rating. I will give a little more foreshadowing and say this: as much as I hate to, you know, put this whole bottle of the Scotch for Dummy scientific method, but I think it's going to happen because this thing needs to go up against a couple of other fifteen. It does. And we a have couple, a couple picked out, and we've got a couple picked out. Whether it's above any fifteen single cask or single barreling, it's called. Um, that, that revival, that Glendronic revival, which everybody knows, that's a heavy hitter. I mean, she stands in the middle of the ring and taunts people, <laughs> right? So, I, I, it's the Mike Tyson. I, right? right? Um, Bring it. So it, it'll be fun to, to maybe, you know, get this one married up with a few different ones. I know that Alejandro, one of our patrons, made a comment. Uh, he wants to see this Sherry Bomb shootout. And it's what, awesome, it's, but I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I can stand that long. I so, mean, <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. So, the, the, the Sherry Bomb shootout's coming up, guys. Um, and if you've got some suggestions, go to our Discord, go to General, and post some of your thoughts, or even email us at scotchfordummies at gmail.com. Happy to hear your thoughts. So Absolutely. far, I'll be honest with you, we've had about, out of the half dozen we've got so far, I would say there there's at least three out of the same set so far that keep coming up. So, <clears throat> yep. We know we have a good idea of what we're going to start if with. We yeah. only knew some other whiskey tubers that have done a sherry shootout. Do you guys ever had those no. lifesaver suckers? They're, they're, they're suckers, they look like lifesavers. The grape ones? Right, but so yeah. this one tastes to me like the red and the cream one. It was like a, a, it was a cream strawberry. That's what I'm getting on the nose. Strawberry cream? Not mm, strawberry cream. I don't know about that. Man. I don't know if that's the name of it. If it maybe I can it was get cherry. The cream. So yeah, there, there's there a is a creaminess note, to it. Right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to find one of those. I haven't had one of those in like 20 years. <laughs> I know you're talking about it. You sell them at school, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> those, those are good. You sell them at school. All right, so what's next? Uh, All right, guys, yeah, I'm going to finish this glass. Well, you don't have to finish it. We can keep talking. Right. Yeah, what we, got, we got some time to kill. Well, what, what do we want to do? We want what, to start into... Do you want to do uh, Scotch in the News? We can talk some Scotch in the News. We can do that. We do have a few And then we'll finish up with this barrel talk. So, yeah. Go ahead, man. You, you, you got the first article of the night. What was it? Once so, Andrew? So, Drew, I don't know. Hopefully, up. Drew can pull up the Scotch in the News. Um, so let's just say tariffs were really, really hard on the Scotch industry. Now, the um, 
can't see the house. Why can't you see the mouse? trying to bring this up. Um, it's right here if you want to look at the... Yeah, so so the, the key here, Scotch whiskey export, exports to U.S. dropped by $251 million. Now, I don't have... Um, so Man, so the, so the background is in October of 2019. Uh, we got a 25% tariff on single malt Scotch whiskeys. Um, now, the thing that I don't think this talks about is um, what the total value of the, the va uh, of the total imports were. But the key here is um, it's not just the tariffs because they said that um, exports to the U.S. fell by 47% in April and 65% in May when the coronavirus lockdowns were kicking in. So there is an additional sure makes sense portion right. to it that we have to understand, but Either way, it started in October when the tariffs kicked in and then just like blew up. Now, well, which surprised me a little bit well, because... That's a quote I, right there. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder also, you know, if, so when we had Mike on from Republic National, he talked about there were some Scotch producers this. that right. when they realized that that was going to be a thing, just shipped a bunch of stuff over. Yeah. They, right. Just um, get it they, here. They, they to get it into the market prior to the tariffs... Yes. Taking place. So, so they built so, up inventory. Right. So they wouldn't need to ship. So there's part of that built into that as well. So SWA um, CEO, um, Karen, uh, of course, this freaking ad pops up. You can't get, I can't get rid of it. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. So, uh, SWA Karen, uh, CEO, Karen Betts, um, says tariffs are a clear and present danger to Scotch whiskey. They are hitting our industry hard with exports to the U.S. now down 30%, 30%. and pursue, uh, producers across the board feeling the pinch, which has only been made worse by the impact of the coronavirus. Well, that's, uh, a double, that's a double way. It is, and I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done with this whole freaking tariff thing on our scotch industry that had nothing to do with our industry. If you want to put, you know, put the pain, put it where it belongs. Right. <laughs> Leave us alone. We, <laughs> why are we involved in this? Yeah, so hopefully, um, well, I'm, I'm assuming that we are getting a lot of innovation in the scotch industry now because single malts are giving you a problem. But if you had a drop of grain in there, now it's a blended whiskey and you can you avoid the tariff. Yes. Oh, man. So that's the thing. Blended whiskeys are not part of the tariff. Nope. So they get it by. Yep. So, in some better news. Thank you. Better news. Uh, Thank you. I'm getting. I'm gonna have to drink now. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. Go up a little bit, Drew. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Pernod Ricard, uh, the Chivas Brothers, Scotch whiskey. Uh, they are reopening all of their distilleries for tours. Um, so you've got what Aberlour, uh, Strasila. Uh, <laughs> Drew's killing me. I, I, I'm not killing you. The stupid ad pop-ups are killing you. Killing These me. websites are ridiculous. Uh, uh, Scapa <laughs> and Glenn Levitt. Uh, so, <laughs> so we've got a lot of, well, some distilleries at least that are starting to reopen. I went on um, the SWA's website today just to kind of see because they, they do a lot of tourism-related stuff in addition to all the other stuff that they do. And they have a list of... Uh, distilleries that are reopening, what date they're reopening, kind of pushing you that way if you needed more information. Uh, so there are some, I think there's some that are still locked down uh, for a while. And I think that there's some that all of them that are reopening have social distancing yeah. in place. They've got severe restrictions. So, I mean, it's not like it's going to be just like it was, um, but at least, you know, they're, they're working to try and get the tourism back to get people there that that still want to go so they don't miss out on the entire summer season Yeah, because uh, it's a lot of money. Gee, I mean, it's, it's a ton of money. It's huge to Scotland. So, Tourism is you know, I, huge. And some of the small, you know, the, the larger distilleries are still making a lot of whiskey and making money that way. Some of those smaller distilleries, if they're open to tourism, like selling a few bottles in the store makes a big difference. Yeah. You right. know, I mean, that, that puts some money in the pocket. So, so I'm you know, curious deal. If, if we see, since this is going on, uh, they're still producing. Maybe they're not able to shoot. Uh, uh, do you think that the Dun Dunnage houses are getting filled up right now? They're laying down more whiskey than, than that's coming it out depends. because they're not bottling as much? Uh, well, se several, of the the, yeah, several of the distilleries actually shut down for a while. So they stopped making whiskey. So production for, stopped Production altogether. stopped. 
Now keep in mind, you laid the whiskey you're bottling now. You laid down 15 years ago. Exactly. So there may be a a lull <laughs> in five, ten plus years. Right. That there, there's a bit of a, a a gap there. Now they are getting back going again and things like that. So make you proud. That that's yep. that's a benefit. Oh, we killed we just killed the zebra. Wow. So Drew just pulled a bottle of a Dinson 18 off the shelf and killed it. Down goes the 18. Like a yep. hoss. I was going to be sad if you only poured like a little bit That's in the glass. Pour. And That's a shame for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. So, yeah, I mean, and, and I've, I've read some stuff that, you know, they were slowly starting to reopen some things. A lot of the distilleries <laughs> were, were running like partial shifts to kind of yes. keep social distancing in place. So, I, I don't know that they're, yeah, I, they're not cranking out liquid and throwing it in the dining house and filling them up. Right. You know? no, I, again, but I yeah. want to know what's happening right now because I want to see if there's a correlation in 15 years, you know, 12, 15 years, if I, I should be so lucky. I don't <laughs> I don't think you're going to see much of a correlation. Uh, yeah, I think a couple months because, again, it's minimum age. So it's a minimum 12 years. So they've got 13 years they can drop in there. They, you know, like, well, uh, like Glenn Dronick did when they were gone, down, shut down for years. I, I think that if you had seen... Yeah. If you saw distilleries shut down for a year or two, different story. Different story. Oh. I think if you saw a distilleries not able to produce, but you also saw a ramp up in demand, and so people were drinking a lot more and able to get the product. Well, that's good that point might too. be a different. But you saw a slowdown in production and an equal slowdown in the demand, demand for the product, at yep. least in the United States. So it's all going to affect. You know, I, I don't. I think it'll probably end up being a wash, but at least they're you opening back that up, and that's and a good thing. So, well, it just makes sense that they're, they're copying the so same. So Mark just thing. emptied another zebra, three ounces of stranger uh, and stranger. <laughs> that's two finger pour. That's not scotch. It's two finger pour, guys. It's, it's the two scotch. finger spread. If you've well, ever it's watched, not it's, no, it's not single malt. No, it's not. It's not a, scotch. It's, not scotch. I, it's, it's technically. Uh, what do they call it? Blended Spirit whiskey. or something? Or? It's Scott Mulch. It's Scotch oh. Malt Whiskey blended with 1% non-Scotch whiskey. Oh, so 1%. that's right. 1%. So they, they have to call it something. You can't call it Scotch, right? It's a whole thing with Stranger and Stranger. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, I was going to say that they're just, sounds like they're just, they finished up. They're just following the same guidelines yeah. as you expect. Yep. Yeah. The COVID so, situation. but I would definitely, like, there are some distilleries that are opening up, which is great. Definitely restricted. So if you're able to go... Plan ahead, call ahead, make sure that they're, yep. you know, if they're taking reservations or how they're doing it. Uh, but there is some options at least. Like there's some things that are opening back up, so that's the good news. Well, it's time to move on, guys. We the need main to see. Topic. Yeah. Is the doc in the house? The doctor's in the house. He's gonna kick oh, us yeah. off tonight with some stuff, and I think that. Uh, without... And then that'll start the conversation, I think. Hey, segway, Tom. Yep. Segway, Tom. Where you at? How about how about pss, a new intro too? <laughs> Great intro. I love it. It represents then, me perfectly. The best part is him at the end going, it's like we're kicking ass. Yeah, it's all. He's like, and then there's Andrew. <laughs> Me. There you go, folks. We have some fun. Yes. Oh, wow. So, I, for, for today's discussion, I thought it would be important that I brought my wood. You brought your wood. That's great. What I have here. It's a long piece of wood. Is a barrel stave. Now oh, this is actually this pictures. is actually Sean's wood that I'm holding. Um, <laughs> because, oh, Sean's wood. Um, yeah. So I don't know if we got the pictures. Not yet. Oh, going. okay. So what I've got here is a, is a barrel stave, and this was a Jim Beam cask, I think it was that that uh, that Sean got so he could build some stools that these guys are actually I sitting on. Some other stuff. Yep. And Just also the, these are what were used to make all these Offland imitated, never duplicated Dr. Scotch or Scotch, Scotch for, for Dummies bottle, bottle hangers. hangers. You take a cross section of this, and so that cross section. So where would that go? So th this is actually like this, looking down the end of yep, the, so the stage. Bottle hangers. You got a bottle hanger. So yeah. let's talk about what this side is. This is the this is probably the most important part of the barrel, except for making sure it's sealed, because this surface is what gives you color, it gives you flavor, and is one of the. I mean, it's really the the quintessential part of why you would toast or char a barrel. 
because it has multiple functions. What you do to that gives you multiple functions. And what you do to that can be very expensive if you do it in a certain certain ways. So um, Drew has a picture that we're going to put up. Hopefully. Hopefully. In a second here. Um, dun, so dun, dun. the key with this is the side of it, and Drew has a closer picture that we'll see later, but the, if you look at the side of this stave, you can see a different change in color from the inside to the outside of the, of the barrel. And what you see is, number one, you've got this black alligator skin surface on the inside. And before we go too far, uh, when I got that, I shaved all of that char off. So it was actually about an eighth to a quarter, quarter of an inch, inch thick. It was thick. Um, so like charcoal on the inside of that barrel. So the top black line, are they seeing this? Uh -huh. That top black line that you just, little black line, when, when Sean got this, that was like a quarter of an inch thick yep. black. Yep. And it was charcoal. Yep. Correct. And, and what you see there is a darker line basically in the center of that stave. What you're seeing there is that's how far the liquid penetrated into that barrel in the time that it aged in here in like three years. So, so in, in Kentucky, you have high temperature, and so it really forces that liquid into that barrel stave. Now, the other thing to, to note is, depending on whether you char it or you toast it, will depend on how thick that layer of potential flavor goes into the wood. And um, so there's really, there's four levels of toast, which would be essentially what they do is they just put a heat source near the inside of the wood. It could be an infrared, it could be other ways to do it. Um, that will then actually essentially bake the wood. It doesn't create this charring pattern, it just bakes it. And so what that does is that breaks down the, the lignin and the, hem, and the hemicellulose that's in the wood and creates those flavors that, that, that you like. So the vanilla, the, um, you can get apple out of it. You can get, um, yeah, and so, so then the deeper you, ch deeper you toast it, the more robust flavors you get. You go from the very mm -hmm. subtle vanilla in a light, light toast to almost like caramel and butterscotch and um, even up to um, like brown sugar and, and deep caramels if you, if you add a char to that as well. Okay. So, so the more flavor you want, the more you want to put into that inner surface of the barrel. You toast it heavy and then a lot of uh, bourbon especially, they, they don't spend as much time on the toast, but what they do is they char it. And so the thing is with toasting, it can take half an hour to toast a barrel. Okay. Because you need to get that toast very deep into the with the wood. But charring, you can be done. You put like 45 seconds of, of flame to but it. But it's like serious flame. And then, and then you let it burn for three minutes and you blow it out. Right. And you, you wash it out and you... you, you, you but what you amazes know. me is when I look at that, that penetration line that you were talking yeah. about, look at, at down at the bottom, it only penetrated maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch, but up at the top, it's almost all the way through. I mean, yep. it's just crazy to see how that liquid affected Depending the Depending on, you know, state. how the barrel was laying and, you know, right. the yeah. pressure and, in it and everything else. And so we will get to that a little bit more when we talk about the, the previous liquids, because that, that is important to note as well in that when you recondition and refinish it, you can only do it so much because you can see in this first fill of bourbon, you've already work that first half of that barrel I see. completely what out. What part are you talking about? The, this the, line, this the, thickness. The, the top, from between the char and the and the, the liquid so the, layer. The so liquid people level. watching the screen right now, the, 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 the layer between the middle line and the top. The, the dark line in there. You've already penetrated all the way in there and you've extracted a significant amount of flavor out of that first half of the wood and you can only go so deep with the char and still have a barrel that will hold together. Right. Gotcha. The beauty of the char. So the char is what most bourbon will use because they want the color. They want that flavor. But what all, the other beauty of that char filter. Is, is a filter. So, you t so when you want to remove flavor from drinking water, what kind of filter do you put in line? Carbon. That's a it. carbon filter. That's it. And that's exactly what you do. When you put an eighth of an inch of carbon on the inside of that barrel, you create a carbon filter. It takes all that sharpness, all that edge out of your whiskey. And that new distillate. That new distillate. Right. And so you, you create a carbon filter to pull all that out and take and take some of the maybe less desirable flavors out of the wood because you have a carbon filter on the Makes inside sense. of the barrel and the, the the liquid is passing into that charcoal and then back so out. It's multi-purpose. And, and what that charcoal does is it actually absorbs those flavors. It it it, it doesn't just pass through. It'll actually stick to the, the the carbon and and then not come back out. Right. That's cool. So 
we're going to actually get into this in a deeper discussion and yeah. talk about that char, that toast. <clears throat> uh, hey, Dr. Scotch, what about seepage through the sides between the... Oh, seepage. Yeah, through so, the sides. so okay. you do get seepage. some of that. So admittedly, <laughs> this, this penetration line is not all just... It's not necessarily uniform because the, there is some leakage, and that's why you'll see different levels at different ends, and then you, when you flip it over, flip the barrel or the, the stave over, the lines are in a little, slightly different area. So you do have some seepage through there. But in general, you're only penetrating a certain amount into yeah. that wood. Well, and I can tell you from the barrels that I've purchased over, you know, in the past, when you get that barrel, you know, you get some that are in better shape than others. I mean, it's, it's a wood barrel. Yep. It's a natural product, right? They're cutting those staves at an angle. They're putting them all together. You got the rings on there, and I can tell you from personal experience, they're not coming apart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Those rings are on uh, there. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no glue, there's no nails, there's none of that. You know, the rings and the tension in the wood holds all of that together, and it's amazing. You have to take a cold chisel and a sledgehammer to get those things off. Beat yeah. the dog piss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they'll hold together until the last ring busts, and then they just fall apart into nothing. It's crazy. But when you look at a full barrel, you know, whole barrel, you can kind of see, you know, there'll be some barrels that are just a little bit beat up. You can see where there's some seepage lines of, you know, the staves didn't quite line up quite right. Yep. And a lot of times they'll, you know, they'll wax them or whatever to, you know, kind of seal up those, those little imperfections. But you can see, you know, over the course of time that, you know, some liquid has come out of there in a, you know, a serious way um, and just seeped out a little bit at a time and you get this like dark stained, it almost looks like syrup that came out of it. So uh, it, it's, it's extremely interesting just to walk through and look at old barrels like that. If you go through a Dunnage yes. house, you're going to see, you know, the variations. I mean, they're the same, but they're not the same. Um, well, and, and so all of that adds to the character of the whiskey. Correct. Each cask has its own story, though, right? It does. I mean, it's got its own life. I mean, what yeah, it's I been mean, through, where it's been, what it's had in it, from? which what, tree what, did it come what, from. What is the what is the uh, the rings per inch of the of the wood? I mean, all those kind of things. All those create different flavors in the barrel. And so, so if you've got a, a a tree with a you know very tight grain on the the um, growth rings. That's going to put a lot more flavor into it than a than a tree that grew really fast and maybe only has you know seven or eight rings right. per inch. So that it's a different right. Barrel. I think it's really cool too. Is that if you just get on YouTube and look at how they char, like there's robots, there's people doing it. There's so many different methods to do it. But the right. robot one's really neat. It's like watching a Terminator thing. They just grab it, and they <laughs> char it, and put it in there. And, I mean, they've really got this down to the science. They do because I mean, the whiskey makers, especially the bourbon barrels, you got to have a new bourbon barrel every year. And so it's really important that my barrels are consistent so I can create a consistent product. Right. So, uh, yeah, Eric, I appreciate you uh, I need to giving, yeah. Eric White Whiskey <laughs> Studies. Thanks, Eric. We're all, appreciate cast, it, man. We've all, we're Thanks, all a little bit cast mature <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> Cheers. I Hold shaved on. a little of that cast maturation off so it wasn't as great so, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that works, too. You know, there were a few comments that, that um, we talked about, you know, when I was talking about the uh, carbon filtration. Um, one comment was, I think Justin O said, I don't like um, Jack Daniels because they, it's a Tennessee whiskey and they use the Lincoln process where they actually take the whiskey and put it through activated carbon. And they actually filter it through carbon, like a huge bed of carbon and run all the whiskey right. through it. That's taking that smoothness and creating more smoothness to it. I see. Which, oh. you know, whatever. So that's our, that's our first part of the That's barrel. part one. Toasting and charring. Dr. Scotch, that was amazing. Yeah. Thank you for your time as always. Appreciate Take that. Take last one. with you on your, on your way out. I might do that. And we love the new intro, man. You, man. you did an awesome job. You're pretty cool, dude. Thank you. I, I worked hard on that. <laughs> you rocked hard. Uh, <laughs> he worked hard on that. Say goodbye, so, Dr. Scotch. <laughs> See you guys. Podcaster. So, why don't we talk about this, Sean? So, the other part of our talk tonight was I going to be uh, <laughs> my. Oh, my we, oh, I'm sorry. Pause. We have a Molly Cam situation. We got you. There's Molly's butt.
Molly like, is our mascot guys Molly. on the podcast. Yeah, dog. You have to get on the show and actually see her, but she makes visits. She's thinking I it's like they, she heard the music twice. She's like, oh, is that the end of the show? No. Is it pretzel time? No, no, it's, no not it's not pretzel time. That's it's the new Dr. Scotch intro. I'm sorry. Right. I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Predecessor right. liquid. Predecessor liquid. All of the scotch barrels are going to come <laughs> to the distillery having had something, something. in them before. Right. Um, the most common thing is bourbon, but you can get all kinds of other uh, previous liquids that are going to influence the whiskey in one way or another. So you can get wines, you can get um, all kinds of sherries and ports. Um, I mean, there's a ton Lots of, of different kinds of wines that you can use that'll all influence it in a different way. Yeah, and, and they just recently changed some of the... The casking regulation. So now you can, if you're Get using crazy. a cask, it has to be basically it has to be something that uses a traditional method that is using that barrel for it to age it in. So you can't age it in a gin barrel because gin doesn't get aged in barrels. Uh, but you could age it in a mezcal barrel because they age mezcals. It has to do something barrel. very, very beer? specific about the types of fruit. Beer is though, fine. Too. Beer is okay. So beers, ales, you can't use anything that has uh, stone fruit. Stone fruit. Um, so like peaches and plums. Plums and, and stuff like that. Uh, I think because it just pits. has so much sweetness to it oh. that it's going to fundamentally change. It's going to make the whiskey too sweet. Uh -huh. They don't want it to be like candy. Oh, is, is okay. kind of where I figure they lie. They, oh, they, they did that. But you're allowed PX sherry, which is right. raisins well, and, and syrup, and <laughs> but that's a yeah. traditional, it is traditional done in that cask, and they've been doing it for a long time. Yep. So you know, it's kind of hard to go back and say that that one's too sweet. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you were making like a plum wine. Like think how sugary and syrupy yeah. that is, and you put it. That's normally not done in a barrel anyway, and yeah. so they kind of cut that off. Um, all of the beers, wines, and liquors that you use, you can't have anything that has fruit additives or oh, yeah. additional sweeteners or you know anything like anything that's going to be unnatural to the process. So they want to still keep it. You know, if you're using you know, a, a ale barrel that, you know, you've aged that ale in, in a barrel, like that's fine. But if you made a strawberry ale uh, and you made it by dumping a bunch of strawberry jam and at the end, work, yeah. that's not going to work out. So they want to keep the barrels as a traditional, you know, and you liquid like, storing and aging sure. method. He sounds like Dr. Scott. But let's now let's, crazy let's, let's be <laughs> transparent into the, the industry's transparency. Um, don't always romanticize and think that that wine, that sherry wine that they're they're saying was previously in it, was in it for a long period of time. No, they do. Too. The industry now does use cheap sherry just to season a oh, cask. Oh, sure, absolutely. And then that sherry is not even put into a bottle. It's used for something else. Right. Um, or re well, reuse or sherry wines. Sh right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. a lot of these things are how much do you want to pay? You know what I sure. mean? If I've got a whiskey that I am buying barrels for that I specifically want to lay down for a purpose to sit in like a sherry butt for 15 or 20 years, I'm not going to use the cheap stuff because it's not going to give me a good product. Sure. I'm using that cheap barrel to, you know, finish, you know, some 10 year old whiskey to just give it some extra oomph, right? Right. But if I want to age something for a long period of time and really give it some flavor and depth, I'm going to spend the money and buy a much nicer barrel that's got much nicer liquid in it prior to me putting right. the sherry. Right. But, you're, but, but to be honest, to you, like when you cook, it's a, it's a recipe. You're looking for something most of the time. I mean, when we talk about some of the main influences, we talked about, you know, obviously the bourbon is probably the, the main sure. mastermind. Sure, it's cheap. It's right. And you can only use it once and once you use it, right? So. Yeah. Uh, Burgundy's out there. We've got Pedro. We've got Oloroso. We've got Sauternes, which is... A unique taste, right? Your sweetness, sure. zestiness. So is Palo Cotaro. For sure, yeah. if you want to call it out. Yep. But my point is, is that it's, it's an ingredient. It's 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 a it's a spice rack in a yep. sense. That's, that's exactly right. Well, and it's it's crap in, crap out. You know, that's how I learned to cook. If you're going to use crappy ingredients, cheap ingredients, then that's the taste that you're going to get. You're not going to get those rich, deep, rich flavors and the depth and complexity. You're going to get very superficial things. And sometimes that's fine. Mm -hmm. 
You know, if you're putting together a, an entry level offering for your distillery and you just need to age something and give it a little color, you know, maybe just a, a cheap reconditioned bourbon barrel is fine for that particular use. Uh, but maybe you've got some, you know, some higher ideals for your stuff down down the road, down the line, you know, stuff that gets aged longer and so you want to choose better ingredients at that point. The other thing to think about too is, is we, you know, we, there's so many liquids out there, but some of them you don't use as a long term. Some of them you do, right. like sherry, sure. Pedro, you could use long term, but like ports, you probably don't want to go to a port and leave it in there for too long because it, those are stronger, overpowering. Right. Yeah. yeah. Heavy so you, red wines. I mean, all of those to me would be a finishing barrel. Right. You just want to throw it in for just a little bit. It's going to quickly add right. a lot of flavor, a lot of color. So you can overdo some of those things in a hurry. I so think. When, when, when we're talking about someone that's inexperienced, they're looking at a bottle of scotch on the shelf, liquor store, right? And they read and it says, you know, sherry butt, or it's, it's generically, you know, sherry cask finish or whatever. Um, and then you got others where it literally tells you the bodega that this came from, right? These right. are, this is a Pedro Zim cask from this bodega. You gotta, there's some difference there. They're telling you, look, I'm sorry that this bottle costs a little bit more, but we paid a hell of a lot more for that cash. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, and at the end of the day, if you really want to look at the, the, the back end of it all, some of these bodegas aren't coming off of their best sherry cast because to finish sherry, to, to, to mature sherry, they want no wood influence on that wine. Yep. So they're using casts that are Biggest 50, 100, possible. 150 years right. old. They're not giving those up to the scotch industry. They're reusing them for their sherry every yep. year. Right. So it, it's you kind of... I'm trying to educate the person when they're looking at that, that label. What does it mean? Because sometimes you'll see very descriptive, and then sometimes you'll see very generic. And what's the difference? Yeah. The difference is, if they're very descriptive, they want you to know. And there's a price connotation that goes with that, like you said. You know, if they're, if they're sourcing from a particular bodega, then they're being very specific with that bodega about what they want that barrel to be when it gets to the distillery. Right. Yep. Um, and they're expecting that barrel to influence the whiskey in a very particular way. That's a good comment. Um, so... Sunday Evening Scotch had a comment. Yep. So we and said, we'll, 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 we'll get to that, Eric. Um, uh, so in Sunday Evening Scotch, I wouldn't lump all bourbon barrel scotch into a low quality group. Some of my favorites are Cat Strength, X Bourbon, Highland Space Sides, Wonderful Stuff, Spirit really shines. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You're right. We're spending a lot of time talking about wine, sherry specifically. Yeah. But I think that, you know, and, you know, the bourbon is the same way as the wines and everything else. If they're being very specific about it, if they're giving you a lot of information, if it's a first fill. Let's talk about that. What's first that fill mean? versus refill. Well, yeah, and I, th I think like uh, Lafroy and, uh, I think it's Lafroy and Maker's Mark, uh, almost all of Maker's Mark's barrels go to Lafroy. Well, they have, they have oh, they've got con yeah, they've got long-term yeah, contracts. Long-term contracts, contracts because yeah, they have to plan for, for going forward. Well, I mean, whatever. it's a recipe. They have to keep everything exactly, exactly the I same. I know what I'm getting from yes. you. You're giving me the same ingredient. I'm not going to yep. go off and get something different. Now, maybe when they're experimenting, but yeah, exactly to Drew's so there, point. There's one, there's one thing that we're missing, too, that makes, I think, scotch unique. I mean, you, you can talk about because this is, tradition can be done in different things, but the casking, the flavor, which, the previous liquid, et cetera, it's also environmental. Where, where is it going to be stored as well? It also takes okay. effect. But at the end of the day, it's a recipe. What, my, what, what do my ingredients okay. make? What am exactly. I going to get out of this? So let's talk, Mark, about first, first fill, fill versus refill. This is the one that always confuses the crowd out of me. It pr should be sim more simple than this, but I'm telling I, you, there's so many labels. You read it on labels. SMWS still confuses me sometimes. I'm like, yeah. refill, first fill. Damn it, which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> So yep. when they're so talking, mean, guys? We're, when they're talking first fill, they're talking first fill of scotch in that barrel, because yes. after the liquid, after the whatever fill. liquid was initially in that barrel, because obviously if you're getting a bourbon barrel, the bourbon was the first thing in the barrel, but this is the first fill of scotch into the bourbon barrel or right. a sherry butt or the port pipe or whatever it is, and that. First fill is going to interact with whatever that previous liquid was much more than a refill. So if you get, you know, if you have a refill but, or you know, whatever barrel size you have, there's still going to be some residual, you know, it's going to have penetrated into the yeah. wood, so sherry or port or whatever it is, 
there's still going to be some leftover after you dump that initial first fill out, yep. but it's going to interact much more lightly. And sometimes that's a bad thing because maybe the previous whatever it was um, didn't really, you know, wasn't very flavorful to begin with, um, or maybe it didn't act on the whiskey, you know, in a, in a profound way. And so now you've got a refill of that same barrel and there's really like, it's almost a spent barrel. I mean, you're getting some oak influence, but there's not a whole lot that's interacting with the, so, with the whiskey. Yeah, I mean, when, when you look at the barrel stave, you know, you've got, you've got a certain depth into the barrel that, that you can actually, once they've charred it, you've released the, um, the vanillins and the caramels and things like that, the sugars, and, and the first whiskey's extracted some of it. But again, you remember, you, you, you have this char layer that's collecting some of that flavor. So then when you put the next whiskey into that, because, you know, it's diffusion process, it's a equilibrium, it's going to extract some of those flavors out of that charcoal. What's right. left. What's le and it's going to do another extraction of the wow. sugars and stuff. Sure. That in that. But, but it's just lighter. It's lighter. And it's so the more, the more you go, the more you go. Now... The thing to keep in mind is there is some rejuvenation that you can do, but we'll get to that when we get well, done with the first yeah, and second fill. But <clears throat> back to the refill. Okay, so we know what yeah. first fill is. Okay, what's the difference? Are all second fills refills? Yes, they have to be at least. That's what I'm saying. So um, sometimes you'll see second fill. Second fill is refill. It's just giving you a little bit more detail mm -hmm. as to this is the second, not the third, fourth, fifth, right. or sixth. Yeah, they, well, they won't tell you the tenth. <laughs> to, to me, when right. they get to when they're saying that, it's I know what happened to this barrel along the way. Right. Whereas when it's refill, it's like that's a really old barrel, man. I don't even know. Right. Let's just put some booze in it and roll it back to the back. Well, you've talked uh, about it before too. Sometimes they take those barrels that are refilled and they they they. Basically, cut them and char them again to, yeah, to, to re, so, so rejuvenate you can, them. You can do that. Yeah, you, there's you two can, different things that can be happening here. You, you can, you know, rejuvenate them by, you know, putting new sherry in them, or you can reduce them by, by the, what, the shave, toasted, mm -hmm. and recharred. Yep. Well, they actually, they, they scrape this entire inside surface off. They take all the char off. They take all all the previously toasted material, and you get to essentially sort of new wood. I think we talked about that. What are we talking about? So, yeah. Uh, so, so if you rejuvenate a barrel, you can you can yep, create about that. new charcoal on it. You can create new char, but you have to keep in mind the whiskey has already removed a fair amount of the sugars and stuff that are in that. If they toasted it deeply and you put a toast layer that goes a quarter of an inch in the barrel, and then you retoast it, you can't get the same potency as it would if it was new because wood. Because there's some stuff that's already it's been already extracted, extracted and it's gone. You can't. You've already broken down the hemicellulose and lignin, and you you end up with just so the cellulose. That's a good question, Logan uh, Wigglesworth. Uh, this is I've got What's a different. I've, I'll read it. But I've got a different spin on the question. His question is: Do they ever char barrels before putting sherry in them? My question to add to that is: Do they ever put scotch in uncharred barrels at all? Untoasted, uncharred. They just take a straight out new barrel. There's no. There's no burn on that at all it's just new american oak and i'm going to put some whiskey in it and see what happens it's a good question actually i suppose that, that, you could an as an option. experimental barrel but well you know, i've seen it on labels new american oak what's that mean guys that means it's not had bourbon in it before it's not oh, but that doesn't mean they've, they've it's not charred it, toasted it's toasted right. because if you don't toast it and you don't char it you get no color Okay. You get zero color. And you get wood. zero filtration. Well, right. I mean, I guess True. the wood's soaking the wood's in. Do you you will get a little flavor, but it's going to be all oaky and tannin. But see, the beauty, right. of the, the beauty of the toast is it burns out some of those tannins. Chemical reaction. And yeah, I mean, you actually do chemical reactions to convert some of those less desirable wood flavors into mm -hmm. more flavor, more desirable wood flavors. But there's different levels of charring, too, to that point. I mean, uh, you, absolutely. You, you're not going to, like, torch the damn thing if it's the first one, if you're going for subtle flavors, or if you want more flavors, you may want to torch it more. Or well, it's the opposite. So, so it depends again, on the distillery. It depends on the age, and depends on what flavors you want. If you want, um, if you mm -hmm. want just mm -hmm. really light vanillins, you may just barely toast it. But if you want some of that caramel, you may just do a heavy toast and not char it. So there's, there's again, it's it's what ingredient do you want? What right. do you want that barrel to right. do for you? So well, I want to, Logan's question, yep. I, I'm going to defer Logan's question to a wine expert. And he's on the channel. Eric, 
Eric White Whiskey Studies. I know that's what it says in the name right now. Answer to Logan's question. Uh, I know you know because you're so yay. So do they ever char barrels before putting Cheryl, sherry uh, in them? I want to get his I question answered. I would think answer. no. I would be yeah. surprised. I would be surprised too, but I want to get him an answer, he asked. Yep. So I think that uh, everyone's comment about the barrel being a choice. The barrel at the end of the day is an ingredient for the whiskey. So, nope. uh, you know, I think when we started on the journey, and most people, oh, I think, have this issue. <laughs> Someone's on a dancing kick tonight. No, yeah, that's my bottles. Uh, I, I think that <laughs> nobody <laughs> realizes how important the barrel actually is to the whiskey, the end product that you get. New make whiskey, not all that great usually. No, not, you know? not really that good. Uh, but I think that... As you as you grow and you start to learn a little bit more about the barrel, like it's almost magic what happens in that barrel. It is, um, and there's so many different things that go into it. it. It's it it is like a chef trying to figure out, you know, right. We're laying down, you know, barrels for 18 year this year or this week. We oh. need we need barrels that are. Uh, this will be second fill sherry butts. Yep. Um, because they're going to be laying down for a long time. We don't want them to have too much influence and get too crazy with this stuff. We don't want like exactly. shaved, toasted, and recharred barrels because they're going to get too spicy. So we want some barrels that have a little bit of something in them, but are not going to overpower that whiskey as they sit there for the next 18 what years. Time of, what time of oak are we back. using too? What, what type oh, of oak are we using? I, All yep. of those things play into this. At it the end really of the is an ingredient. It's I a mean, spice rack. The, it is. The, the second tier of the... Um, importance of the distiller. You've got the master blender, master distiller, and then you have the master of wood, whose their job is to provide the barrels. Right. And doing that is a <laughs> is a big job to be able to provide what the master blender wants at the appropriate age, the appropriate refill level, the appropriate previous liquid. All that is it's a it's a game, and and you have to work with that master blender very deeply to make sure that you're putting the the whiskey that they're distilling mm. today. In a barrel that will last for 10, 12, 15, 25 years. So yep. there you go. Um, Mike Porter, Michael Porter, Scotch, uh, Sunday Evening Scotch, asked a question earlier. Scroll up just a wee bit here. Um, it was it's, it has to do with a regulation, SWA regulation, right here. Yeah, it says, um, doesn't Scotch have to touch used barrels at some point in the aging process by SWA regulations, even if they go into virgin oak at some point? I'm not sure about that. Well, that's a good point. I don't, that's, uh, that's something we need to go to the SWA's website to, to I, actually I research. was looking through, and I don't remember I don't seeing anything about that. They were very specific about the kind of casks, but I don't remember seeing anything about that. But that doesn't mean that it's not there somewhere in the fine But it's got to be, be an oak barrel. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. I, see, I mean, I, yeah. there's you, you might That's get That's a in, good gray question. Don't read the FAQ section on the SWA. Pull the regulation and read it. It's boring, but... You, you read it and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Eric answered the question um, that sherry casks are 500 liters and they're never emptied as a part of the Solera. Makes which, sense. there you go. Yeah, I mean, charring would not have any significance because then they never empty the nonstop. You, I mean... Perfect logic. Yep, there you go. Thanks for the answer, Eric. There Good we job. go. I knew we had it. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, Logan even said thanks. <laughs> I mean, so what we've discussed over the past two weeks is kind of a starting point. It's it's not by any stretch no, it, it's just the end education. all be all of everything about the casking. And in fact, it, every time we do one of these, I, I start to read and get into more of the technical aspects oh, of amazing. what they are doing. Uh, to bring me my scotch. Uh, I found the whole thing about barley growing absolutely fascinating. Oh, yeah. I That's still good. follow along with uh, a few of the strains oh, of barley just because I wanted yeah. to want to see what's going on with it. But, you know, all of these things at the end of the day really affect what goes into your glass. Sure. So, you know, if you want to geek out on it, there's it's surprising because of the very few ingredients that go into whiskey, how much Thought, how much variable and, there is and variation mm -hmm. goes into that final product just with those few ingredients right. sure. yeah. um, so it, I find it fascinating and the thing is it's so, so interesting is the Scotch Whiskey Association has like um, profess, professorially um, peer-reviewed uh, research articles on the aspects of making whiskey 
they are very clear. They they partner with universities, right. they research, yeah. and all that. And how oh, it's not just a fly by some the guy next door rings. saying, "Hey, it, it, put it this is, in the barrel." It is an industry, <laughs> and they are they're supporting college, universities and colleges to research what these different things do, and it's. Yeah. It's Barley strains, yeast strains, wood oh, types. Oh, it's very. It's <laughs> definitely Dr. Scotch's world as far as it is. Right. nerdism. And it has to be. I mean, it's a billion-dollar industry. Well, and, and it's <laughs> and it's one of uh, Scotland's largest industries. But yeah. at the end of the day, you don't have to be you know Dr. Scotch to be able to go to a liquor store and pick up a bottle and read the label and understand Correct. what you're what's in this. You know, you don't have to be that the geek to do it. But the further down the rabbit hole you want to go, guys, the further yeah. you can go. We, we've got a few on here that yeah. are probably farther down the rabbit right. hole. Right. <laughs> so I, you know, and we are getting close to the, the time here, but I, I want to go back to the comments and I want to do a couple of shout outs and just say thanks to, to everybody in the conversation. I know this doesn't help our podcasters at home, but there's been great discussion in the comments and, and a lot going on that we haven't had a chance to catch on because you guys are, you know, um, moving along so fast, but there's been a lot of really good information that's been provided in the comments um, from a lot of different people. There's even better information on our Discord channel. That's true, I, and, and yep. um, I hope everyone's taking advantage of the Discord channel. I literally reached out to a new patron today just to make sure that they knew that it was there. You don't have to be a patron to be on the general. No, but you can be. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and, open to and anybody. It's open. We've got over. 200, close to 300 people on our channel. And it's constantly, people talk all day long. Oh my gosh, long. I got to shut the freaking, I got to mute my computer on my in my loft because I'm working all I hear. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Well, like, you want to look, it's good stuff. <laughs> it is good stuff. And yep. it's people all over the world, all good people. I mean, everybody helps everybody out. If you have questions or, you know, you're not sure about well, something, that's a great resource to get and, to. And a great way to find good deals online. People are always posting, you know, hey, check this website out, et cetera. Yep. Hey, by the way, we just got a quick shot. Hey, thanks, Super Kevin. Chat. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Kevin Bloom, thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers Super buddy. Super chat. Thanks for joining the show it. and being a part of it. Yep, yep. Guys, it was a lot of fun tonight. This is a great topic. Um, we are always looking for topics, too. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button right now. It really helps us. And also, if you've got some topic ideas, feel free to send it to us in their Discord or at scotchfordummies at gmail.com. We'd love to hear you. We go live every Thursday, so we're always looking for good topics. We right. want to keep educating because we don't want to just sit here and drink and get drunk. We want to talk to you guys about some good topics. We, and we geek out on this. You know what? Anyway. Honestly, uh, for those of you guys that are watching the, the you know the show right now or are going to watch it on record, uh, the podcast we're really starting to put a little more effort into that. We're actually going to start putting some um, some telephone interviews yep. into the podcast, of, and they're going to be some really fun and interesting interviews from other ambassadors, um, other things that's going on in the industry to tr try to get more information out. We're going to be a, an avenue to get information out to our podcast listeners. So even though you're watching, you might. Oh, we want to go back and listen to the podcast because oh, there's going to be awesome. something else in there. So, just one, a shout out to that. One more super chat, guys. Bobby J. Bobby J. Bobby J. Thank man, you so much, thank man. you. Appreciate you. Support, That's guys. awesome. Thank you so much. Happy Thursday, Bobby. Thanks for joining the show. Appreciate you guys joining us. Brad Murphy, down under. <laughs> Good to see you, Brad. We'll see you hey, guys love next everybody Thursday. Out there. Thank you so much, you guys. Fun Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. We gotta show Molly. 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 Somebody give me a pencil. Give me a pencil. <laughs> <laughs>